Um, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this series' presentation about line scan application. The, um, the development of a line scan application is often perceived as much more complex than the area scan counterpart. And in this presentation, we will detail functionalities offered by the URSIS frame grabber that simplify the development and the setup of land scan applications. But first, let me start with a, a very short introduction about the, the URSIS company. Okay. So Eurisys is a, a manufacturer of machine vision components. So our headquarters is in Sora, which is located in the eastern part of Belgium. We have R&D teams in Belgium and Germany. Eurisys also has sales and support offices in Europe, USA, Singapore, China, and Japan. And currently our staff uh, counts 85, 85 employees. So 50% of us are working for R&D. The Eurysis also benefits from an extensive network of distributors, and we are renowned for providing high quality products and premium support to OEM and system integrators. So at Eurysis, we offer uh, three types of products. We are, of course, very well known for our frame grabbers that have been used in the, in the vision industry for more than 30 years now. Um, in addition uh, to frame grabbers, we also develop and produce IP cores for various interface standard and, um, and uh, imaging sensors. Um, we also provide a complete range of uh, machine vision software uh, libraries known as Open Vision. And those libraries are dedicated to the development of 2D, 3D, or even deep learning based uh, applications. So now back to our subject, the uh, land scan application. So I start with a little bit of basics about land scan uh, acquisition. So a land scan camera uh, output one line at a time. So the construction or the reconstruction of a 2D image is therefore will therefore implies motion, movement. Uh, typically, it is the object or the web which is moving under the camera. Um, to avoid deformation due to the to speed variation, for instance, land scan applications usually rely on motion encoders to synchronize the acquisition line rate of the camera with the speed of the object. So all the URSIS frame grabbers, whether they are compatible with the camera link, uh, coaxpress or coaxpress over fiber standard, are equipped with a dedicated IO lines. Uh, connector to connect the motion encoders. So they even support quadrature motion encoders uh, with a frequency up to 5 megahertz. So as we have seen, the usage of uh, motion encoders is mandatory to achieve a constant aspect ratio of the acquired images. However, obtaining the same resolution in the horizontal and vertical direction, what is typically referred to square pixels, uh, might be difficult uh, because motion encoders featuring the exact required number of pulses per revolution are not always available. So in our example here, uh, we need an encoder which outputs uh, 9,537 pulses per revolution. Um, and of course, I'm not quite sure that such an encoder is really uh, readily available in the, in the market. So to solve this problem, Eurysis provide the rate converter. Um, the rate converter multiplies or divides the, uh, the signal provided by the motion encoder by any rational number. So this allows the, the, the camera to acquire lines at any programmable resolution, lower or higher than the resolution of the motion encoder. So this feature is implemented in all the Eurysis frame grabbers. Uh, back to our example, the encoder that we have here provides 5,000 pulses per revolution, while uh, 9,537 pulses are required to achieve square pixels. And in this case, it means that we just need to configure the rate converter uh, to multiply the, 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 the encoder signal by 1.907. Uh, and that's it, the problem is solved. We get nice images featuring uh, uh, nice uh, square pixels. 
Another situation where the rate converter is of great help is when a land scan application must evolve towards uh, a higher resolution. Uh, in this case, changing the camera uh, of a given setup usually means that you also need to change the motion encoder. Um, thanks to the red converter, it is possible to keep the same encoder while increasing the resolution of the camera. This just requires updating the, uh, the conversion factor. So as we have seen, the red converter gives system designers incredible freedom and flexibility during the development of a landscape application. Um, the trend in landscape application nowadays is to design systems that are as compact as possible. And due to the, to the reduced available space, it is not always possible to place sensors such as presence or proximity detector at the same location as the land scan camera. So when inspecting discrete objects of finite size, uh, presence detectors are usually used to start a new scan. So if a presence detector is located upstream compared to the camera, um, it is then mandatory to postpone the start of the scan until the, ob the object actually reaches the camera. And to achieve this, uh, URIS uh, frame grabbers are equipped with delay tools that introduce a delay between the object detection and the start of the scan. Uh, in case of land scan application, the, this delay is expressed as a number of encoder tick, which ensure that uh, any speed variation, of course, is taken into account. Um, for some land scan application, especially at low speed, or when the application is starting, uh, backward motion uh, might be observed. So in this case, the same portion of the object or the web is acquired several times. First, in the initial forward direction, then in the backward direction, and then again in the forward direction. And of course, uh, this will result in uh, distorted images. To avoid this problem, you resist provide a tool which is called a backward motion compensator. So, as already mentioned in this presentation, Eurysis frame grabbers support quadrature motion encoders, which means that they can decode A and B phases to know in which direction, forward or backward, a part or a web is moving. So to ensure distortion-free images, the backward uh, motion compensator will pose the line acquisition when a backward motion is detected. And then the line acquisition will automatically resume when the motion is again in the forward direction, but at the exact same place where the acquisition was interrupted, meaning that there is no additional line and there is no missing line. Um, when acquiring images of very large objects, uh, most of the time, several cameras uh, are, request, are required to cover the, the whole width of the area to be inspected. And in this case, it is really mandatory to synchronize the acquisition of all those cameras. Um, you resist uh, frame grabbers support the so-called C2 ceiling feature. C2 ceiling allows to very accurately synchronize the image acquisition between several cameras. So a dedicated C2 ceiling connector is available on the, on the PCB of each of our frame grabber. And the synchronization is, is managed uh, through a master slave architecture, which means that the master, uh, ma the master board, master frame grabber, receives all the trigger signal and propagates them to all the slaves to make sure that all the camera are acquiring each line at the exact same time. So C2 Sling is able to accurately synchronize cameras that are connected to the same frame grabber or to different frame grabbers in the same PC or even to different frame grabbers that are plugged in different PCs. And of course, uh, we do provide dedicated accessories to achieve this task. So here we have an example. We have two cameras connected to two frame grabbers that are plugged into the same PC. And these two cameras must be synchronized. So in this case, we just need to connect a C2C link connector 
to both uh, to both frame grabber with a dedicated flat cable to synchronize these cameras. So this is the first example. So now if we had if we need to add a third camera to the system, uh, but in this case the camera is connected to a frame grabber which is plugged in a different PC, the first thing we have to do is to connect each frame grabber uh, to an inter PC C2C link adapter in each PC and then connect both, both inter PC C2C link adapter with a standard Ethernet cable. In this system, we have three cameras. They can be synchronized and the trigger just have to be sent to the master uh, frame grabber. Then the master frame grabber will just ensure that all the slaves will receive exactly the same trigger at the same time. So this allows really the synchronization of several cameras. Um, in large scan applications, based on the result of the inspection software, it is often required to control external devices. Uh, for instance, if you need to reject uh, a defective product. So even though the main task of the, the Eurasis frame grabbers is to acquire images, they can also be used to control external devices, such as status lamp or cutters or ejectors or stampers, just to, just to name a few. So the Eurasis frame grabber uh, implements one or several user action scheduler. Um, they, those action schedulers, they are used to trigger user events or to toggle the state of uh, the board output line at the predefined time. So in case of LAN scan application, the timing reference is again the encoder tick counter. So as you can see, in case of LAN scan application, the encoder has really a very important role to play. Uh, so by changing the state of uh, any output line of the frame grabber at a very accurate time, the user action scheduler allows to control the operation of external devices that are connected to the frame grabber. Uh, before moving on to the next subject, I would like to talk about um, a specific kind of line scan device. Um, contact imaging sensor that we also call CIS. Uh, they have a very short working distance. Typically, they are placed just one or two centimeters above the, the observed object or the, or the web. Uh, and this, of course, allows for a very compact system. When several CIS are required to, to cover the whole width of the area to be inspected, uh, they are usually staggered. And, and the reason for this specific arrangement is to avoid losing pixels between CIS if they were placed side by side. Um, for some application, it is necessary to, necessary to reconciliate images coming from, uh, from different land scan cameras or CIS into a single large image that represents the whole area to be inspected. This is what we call the image stitching. Um, when the CIS are staggered and you need to, uh, to stitch images, then this operation must solve horizontal uh, overlapping, as well as vertical shift. And this operation usually is done by the CPU. It means that it also involves image copy. So Eurysis has uh, offered a very neat uh, solution to this problem. Uh, the, the image stitching is actually performed by DMA transfer. So our frame grabbers are DMA agents which means that they do not need any intervention uh, of, the, the, of the CPU to transfer data into the PC memory. So instead of feeding its own memory buffer, each frame grabber accesses uh, a common big buffer and transfer its image data at the relevant location, taking into account the vertical shift and the horizontal overlapping. So the image stitching is performed on the fly by DMA transfer. There is uh, it does not require any CPU, use, any CPU usage or uh, image copy. So it means that the CPU is just ready and fully available for the, uh, for the image analysis. Um, another very interesting feature uh, that, are, that is offered by the, the Eurysis frame grabber is the metadata insertion. So metadata are additional uh, bytes that are appended at the end of each line. Um, the metadata are used to report 
the frame grabber IO state, for instance, or the number of lines that has been acquired so far, or the encoded tick position, or uh, the value of um, a pulse counter or any event counter. So as such, uh, metadata provide a kind of, um, of snapshot of the system when a given line was acquired. The goal of the metadata is, for instance, to reconciliate images that are acquired by different cameras at different uh, locations. Uh, metadata are also uh, especially useful to, to validate the behavior of a line scan application. Uh, they allow to verify that a given line was acquired at the expected time. And this is particularly important when the line scan uh, acquisition involves several uh, strobing sequences, complex strobing sequences. So we, you have to make sure that the line was acquired when the corresponding uh, strobe light was, uh, was on. Okay, so as we have seen, the requirement for motion makes the development of line scan application a bit more complex compared to uh, area scan applications. Uh, however, we have seen in this presentation that thanks to the red converter, the delay tool, uh, the backward motion compensator, uh, C2C link, the user action scheduler, uh, metadata, and of course the full control over the DMA transfer using URESIS frame grabber to develop land scan applications definitely makes it much easier. And this concludes my presentation. So thank you very much. And now it's time for the question. Mm -hmm. And the first question is, is the stitching done in the grab as memory? So actually the, the stitching is not done in the in the, the frame store of the frame grabber, it is done through the transfer, through the DMA transfer. So why the frame grabber is transferring its image data uh, to buffers, this is how the stitching is performed. So it's performed on the fly through the DMA transfer. So inside the frame grabber, we are not reconstructing uh, the, the image or stitching the image. It is done directly by uh, transferring the correct data at the relevant location. Mm -hmm. Uh, next question. What is the maximum multiplication division factor of the rate converter? Uh, so the maximum division is by 1000 and the maximum multiplication is multiplied by 1000. There is a limit, of course. Uh, the multiplication cannot be higher than 5 megahertz. But to be honest, I don't know any landscape camera that supports the line rate of 5 megahertz. So we have, I think, a comfortable margin regarding this. Uh, and is the delay tool able to manage several events at the same time? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's possible. Actually, the, the delay tool operates like, uh, like a, a delay line. Uh, so it may accept uh, a new event while the previous one has not been delivered yet. Um, so it means that the, the, the delay tool can, oh, yeah, is able to, uh, to record uh, uh, a sequence of up to 16 different events. Mm -hmm. And actually on the frame grabber, there are two delay tools. Mm -hmm. So Looking you can up. choose which one you want to use. Looking at the clock, I think we have time for one more question. And what is the typical trigger propagation delay between master and slaves when using the C2C link synchronization? Mm -hmm. Um, so we have to distinguish between uh, synchronization of camera that are connected to the same frame grabber. In this case, it is an internal uh, latency, let's say. And between the master and the, and the slave, we will have something like maximum five nanoseconds. Uh, if we have to, um, in, if the, 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 the master slave architecture will involve uh, another frame grabber, so two frame grabbers, you have to connect them together with a flat cable. The flat cable we in introduce maximum uh, 10 nanoseconds of delay. And if you want to synchronize cameras that are connected to frame grabber that are plugged in different PCs, uh, suppose that we have a separation of 100 meters between the two PCs and you still want to synchronize those cameras, then the inter PC C2C link adapter will add uh, something like um, 20, between 20 and 40 nanoseconds again. It seems you have an answer for, to every question. We will <laughs> test this after the next presentation when we start the final Q&A. So, okay. Jean-Marie, thanks a lot. 
So Jean-Marie, there's a question still for you. How many actions can be managed by the scheduler tool at the same time? Uh, so, so per user action scheduler, there is a, a pool of uh, maximum uh, 64 uh, actions. Uh, but you have to understand that you have to, to feed new actions in, the, in this pool. So it means that when an action is, is done, it's ex executed, it, is, it goes automatically out of the pool. It means that you can put another one inside. And you are always informed about the level uh, uh, of feeling, let's say, of the of the pool. So you know exactly if you can add more, more, uh, more action in the pool. Mm -hmm. Another question to Eurysis. You provide camera link and coax express frame trappers. Are the uh, features you mentioned in your presentation available for both the areas? Uh, yes. So for for the coax press. Uh, and the latest generation of uh, camera in frame grabber, we actually use the same driver, the e grabber driver. So we have exactly the same functionality, yes. Mm -hmm. Once again, if you have any questions to the audience, just use the QA section.